today we are going to be talking about how we got here for a month i feel like so many people like they want to travel to hawaii they want to spend like a good amount of time here and not have it just feel like a week vacation but they're also like okay i just like actually can't commit to moving here and so we kind of wanted to talk about how we did it for a month because i feel like that's like a good length of stay mm -hmm. where we're not just yeah. only here for a quick week where you're you feel like you're packing everything into a week, but it's like actually like immersing ourselves and getting to like live here without like really like full on by family. <laughs> I'm going to Hawaii. So we're gonna be talking about some of the prep work for getting here. So like housing, transportation, um, packing, and then also we're gonna talk about like kind of what it was like once we got here. We've been living here for two a little over two weeks little now over two weeks. um so what it's been like and maybe like anything that like we would have done differently awesome though yeah, yeah. we've had so much fun and we really think that if you're able to just do it just do it the position we're in we just graduated college and you could do this if you're like graduating high school or even just like a summer or graduating like preschool or something like any graduating from any level <laughs> the way that we did it might be different from the way that you did it whether it's the amount of money you have the amount of time that you have everyone's situation is going to be different obviously this is just how we did it and we think that if we just share a little bit and you pick up just a you know an idea here an idea there of what works for you any little bit of help that we receive from anyone really goes a long way and it makes the trip that much more enjoyable and obviously it's summer we started planning this in january yeah so it was a lot of preparation but it was worth it you need to plan early so with that maybe we'll like jump into some of like the preparation that like went into us coming with some of my tips on housing um the way we kind of have done it and i feel like this started when we were like studying abroad i look for like the housing which usually is an airbnb because it's just i feel like a really good option um versus like a hotel which is expensive and we're not really into like doing a hostel for a month hotels you're only confined to a room if yeah you're staying for a longer time airbnbs are great yeah more space to roam around and, not and, go crazy. and you can do a hostel you can like yeah. get a camper van like any of that could work with this we just personally chose for like the length of stay that it'd be easier to be in an airbnb um but then dylan does the transport so getting here getting around like that's always been his thing i don't know how we just like ended up kind of drawing that line right. um so with the housing first i was just like okay like let's see what there is so i'm on airbnb and i'm saving them like literally all across hawaii it didn't matter which island it was i was going across the different ones and i had put in some filters like obviously i was looking for a place with ac really you sure you want ac <laughs> like we're going in the summertime we're gonna need yeah. ac um so i was looking at different stuff like that but i didn't want to be too narrow in my searches because i wasn't sure what was going to be available but i was starting to like choose my favorites and i was like narrowing it down partly on like what it looked like because i just enjoy being in a space that's cute and then also that had certain amenities like i said like ac or having laundry available when we're here for a month that's kind of important i think i talked about it in our airbnb tour video which actually you can check that out um but i think i talked about it in that but like we wanted to get a house that had like a stove and an oven rather than some of them just had hot plates and we're like okay for the length of stay if we're gonna be cooking in a lot we want to have something like that and again you're gonna have your own personal like preferences with some of that stuff but that's what worked for us so after looking at like the best airbnbs that i had saved in each area like my different favorites i ended up starting to research the areas that some of them were in so i feel like there was a decent amount in waikiki because they had a lot more housing available there but i mean for us i just didn't really want to be in like a city city it is more like a city there. I wasn't against it, but with the options we had available, it wasn't my first option. I liked some of the ones in North Shore, but overall it seemed like our best option was here on Maui, West Maui, which actually happens to be where my dad stayed when he came for six months after he graduated college. So I actually had traveled to West Maui before, so I like knew I liked it, I knew it was a good area, and I'm really happy that we chose this area, but that's the thing. I feel like you have to look and see what area you want to be in. Like, I liked Maui because it was kind of a mix of, like, more of the adventurous, more rugged 
Kauai maybe than some of Oahu, which is a bit more built up, but at the same time, Kauai, I hope I said that right, um, felt like a little bit more We had roads and supermarkets rugged. here. But I think overall, like it felt like more was happening here, like it was a bit more like lively and energetic and people would be around us. So that's why we kind of chose Maui. And West Maui specifically, we liked the area. Um, obviously, I think there's some good options in like Central Maui, but like, yeah, overall, this is what worked best for us. I'd watch some like videos on that. I'm sure there's tons available. And then it actually happened to be our most affordable and the cutest like Airbnb with all the amenities that we wanted here. So it kind of fell perfectly. And that's kind of what went into choosing the Airbnb and the process that I went through yeah, so in finding it. Just our location, Napoli. But we're about 15 minutes from Lahaina. We're about an hour from the airport. And to do the entire road to Hana, it takes about three hours to get to Hana. And it's a little bit quieter here, which is kind of nice. Yeah. So, talking about getting around. We went through it all. We thought about Uber. We thought about bicycles. We thought about a motorcycle. She said no, obviously. We thought about a Jeep. We thought about just doing surfboards. We also thought about the fact that we were like, we're under... 25 which is usually the rental rate like are we even gonna be able to rent a car right, like if so we, we wanted to do that so we thought about walking <laughs> what we settled with was a standard rental car um, and there was a lot of things that kind of went into that first being that we are 22 years old and most rental cars have a weird thing where if you are between the ages of 21 and 25 you have to pay more because we are bad drivers at least they think I'm we're a better. good driver. So, there is a way to get around this though. So the young runner's fee, it's literally gonna be like 30 bucks, potentially even more a day, just because you are within the ages of 21 and 25. But there's a way to get around that and it literally only costs like 50 bucks. If you have AAA and you book through Hertz, they completely waive that. It makes it so much easier. It literally was just drive in, drive out. I literally just gave them my license and they well, said, have a nice day. And you didn't even have AAA. I didn't. But you signed up, what was it, $50? It was like $50. Like dollars. So like, and then you're covered for at home in case you right. lock your keys in the car. And you're covered like... here. You're covered here in case anything happens. So it's like a win-win. Cost of what it would be for a day and a half for the young renter's fee, it covered us for the entire trip of the young renter's fee. So it was literally the best thing you can do. And I know that there's people that have done different car rental services on the island, not doing the enterprise, not doing the Hertz, not doing the budget. We've heard some kind of horror stories about that. But in the end, we chose one where it was just, you know, a little bit more of a nationally known one. And it just seemed a lot easier. And it worked out great for us. We have a Kia. We absolutely love her. She works great. Rental car is super important. That's something that you also want to look way in advance because obviously now cars are going for like oh my gosh six hundred dollars a day, like something it's insane absurd. like that. So for the whole month, we got a car for about thirteen hundred dollars, which might sound like a lot, but when you break it down over thirty days, it's not it's not terrible. It really isn't, um, and it's it's worked great. For also, you can't even imagine how much it would be for a Jeep then. Like, that's just something I want to add in because I feel like, obviously, you want to be in a Jeep. Like, one, Jeeps are just amazing. Two, you're in Hawaii. Like, that is, like, I feel like the car to drive around Hawaii in. If you have the money, like, by all means, Jeep. just go get a yeah. Jeep. Like, that can totally, like, enhance your experience. But at least, like, in our case, when we're kind of here for a month, like, that would be really expensive for us. And we're trying to be budget conscious. I don't know. There are just certain things that you need to weigh out for the experience that you want, but some of it will potentially be having to part with the Jeep. Like I know I was kind of like sad about it, but it was also that's gonna provide me with the experience. Like it, it's almost like, okay, you could go for two weeks and get a Jeep, or do you wanna go for a month and sacrifice the Jeep? And maybe you'll say two weeks in the Jeep, but for us, we wanted to stay for a month and that meant sacrificing the Jeep. Yeah, I mean, someday, someday we'll come back and get the Jeep. We knew people that were here for a week and they paid $800 for a Jeep while we were here for a month and paid about $1,300 for just a standard car. So yeah. that's just what we chose. 
take from that, maybe talking about some of like the packing real quick. I mean, obviously, you kind of just pack how you pack. Like you probably have your own routine. Um, but just some of the stuff that we thought about with like packing versus what not to pack. I feel like one of the things I realized was that I packed too many nice clothes. I packed more like dresses for like out to dinner, even just like nice tops or like a cute top and a cute skirt. I mean, unless you're going out to dinner a lot, but like because we're cooking in a lot, like I'm in lounge clothes, lounging in here a lot, like obviously plan a few of like your nicer outfits, but I just think that I probably did like half and half and I really did not need as many like nice clothes. And I always say that and then I'm like, well, what if, what if? Do a few day trippy outfits if you want that. And I shoes. Think, shoes yeah. are something that's more important than clothes because you're gonna want sneakers if you're gonna do hikes. You're gonna want water shoes if you're gonna go into natural water springs and that kind or of stuff. Or even the ocean. Or even the ocean. Scares and you're gonna me. want, you know, different types of shoes for the beach, flip flops, sandals, any of that stuff. So less clothes, more shoes, in my opinion. In my opinion. <laughs> I'm like still more clothes, but I like that I packed a variety of shoes. Like that was really yeah. smart to do. Another thing, and you probably could like find this reading around, but like sunscreen's more expensive here. I mean, a lot of things are more expensive on the island, which we're gonna talk about. But I mean, for us, we're like, okay, like let's throw in sunscreen, let's throw in bug spray. We even brought like shampoo and conditioner just so we didn't have to buy it here. And that way, once that stuff isn't coming back with us, that's room for our souvenirs. So leave room, leave room for souvenirs. Yeah, I didn't do the best job at that this time, but I mean, good thing I have room. We'll see. And the last thing with packing is beach towels. I was able to see that our Airbnb had provided beach towels for us. So that was nice because it meant that yeah. we didn't have to pack beach towels. And even then, if yours doesn't, I'd almost just buy one here and then ditch it because, I mean, it takes up a lot of space, but it depends on what kind of space you have. So now I feel like we should kind of like go into like how we plan like what we were doing here. And with that being said, like I feel like some of how we travel is like not planning too much. Some of it's just being like spontaneous. Pulling and, like, over on the side of the road. Where we go. Yeah. I feel like that's some of the way we travel, but at the same time, you do want to see the things that are worth seeing. So we did um, quite a bit of research. Like as soon as I feel like we found out like, okay, like we've got the Airbnb, we've got the car, we've got the flights. We started researching and like collecting different like things we wanted to do, places we wanted to eat while here. One of my top things for how to like, sorry, there's a bird. <laughs> One of my top things for making this list was using Pinterest and I did this a lot while abroad too but like I'll look up the place I'm going on Pinterest rather than on like Google or some type of search engine because on Google you get like the TripAdvisor or like some of those lists um, which, which are good. They usually highlight some like of the top things for tourists to go see but I do like Pinterest because I'll end up clicking through to like a travel bloggers website and they kind of have some of the more unique things like obviously they have some of the big things to do as well but they usually do include some like unique things to do unique places to eat that they found in their travels so i love 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 using pinterest and not just like maui but i searched like best things to do in Paya or like most instagram worthy things um so i use that and then i also used instagram quite a bit to search so i would search like a place on instagram and i'd find like say i'd search like iwa valley um which we went to i would search that under place and then i'd find other people who traveled there click on their account and see where else they traveled while in maui um so that was always fun you get picture ideas i like doing it that way um or even searching people who i know who have traveled to maui before and seeing where they went mm -hmm. um because that's how i found out about like coconut glens on the road to hana um some influencer that i followed had went there and i was like oh i want to see that like that looks cute and colorful so that's a way that I usually look up some of the things that I want to do. I would never use Pinterest. I would never <laughs> use Instagram. So what am I going to do? Uh, first off, I think guidebooks are great. There are some great Maui guidebooks. We used Maui Revealed. Um, that's, that's, a that's a fantastic guidebook. There's a ton of information, a ton of not so touristy. There's a ton of touristy stuff on there too. Different hikes, different beaches. And I think one of the things I like about it is that the author often provides like parking spots yes, which is, which like is where great. to park in the different areas which is really nice yep. because parking can be a pain sometimes 
I also use YouTube. Obviously, you're using YouTube because you're here. Uh, YouTube is also great because you kind of get more of a, you can kind of see what's happening through videos. Um, you can kind of get a wider scope of what's going on, which is awesome. My number one thing would be to ask a local. Don't be yeah. afraid, ask a local. They know it better than anyone else. The person checking you out at the supermarket, your waiter or your waitress at your restaurant. Ask them what they would do in their free time. The top spots they would go to because it's not always going to be the touristy stuff. And that's my second thing. Because we're here for a month, we don't just want to do touristy thing after touristy thing after touristy thing. Don't like you get can me wrong. road to Hana and find like new things, right. but it's like, let's do something else too. So we've done stuff like Dragon's Teeth. We went to a labyrinth. While there were still tourists there, it's just kind of nice to get away from it's the a, hustle and bustle yeah. of everyone going there. We decided to go to upcountry so far. We've done a little bit of less known hikes, maybe a little bit. Maybe. I, I mean, it's hard to say because it's not to be like, oh, we did a secret hike. Right, like, there's nothing we've that, done like, that's secret, but we've just done things that maybe, aren't as big as what someone that would be here for a week would yeah. do. And I think that's like the big thing, like is yeah. kind of, like yeah. if you're here for a week, you might not make the time to go to upcountry, which I think you should because it was really cool. But um, yeah, I feel like that's a lot of like what we did in order to like plan where we were going. And we kind of yeah. just made a list of these places. We didn't plan out the days. Like, I don't know, you can do that. We're just not those like travelers and maybe for certain types of trips, but I feel yeah. like some of it's just like going with the flow. Also with some of that stuff being said, we're probably gonna do a video about like some of our favorite things or some of the favorite places that we ate. So stay tuned for that. So then just talking about some like adjustments, like once we got here, I feel like time was an obvious one. Six uh, we're hours. from the East Coast, so. It's a lot, six it really hours. is. Um, it kind of set up our sleep schedule pretty nice, although I feel like we're just now adjusting to the time of it. Um, but it was nice to like ride the wave of like getting up early, like you're on vacation, you wanna get up early, you wanna seize the day. And there's not a lot to do at night because of island time. Stuff kinda shuts down early, mm -hmm. there's not as much to do. Yeah. So, it's important to get on a good sleep schedule and that's what we've kind of realized. We literally wake up at like seven o'clock and go to bed at like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. It, yeah. it sets us up for we're allowed to do like the most things that we wanna do during the day and take advantage of everything that we can during the day. And then also a big adjustment was grocery prices. Like obviously yeah. we're cooking um, from home a lot, but like the groceries are more expensive. It's like six dollars for bread um, So just be like prepared for that in your budget um, and just know that that's coming um, yeah. And just kind of shop around a little um, But that definitely was an adjustment, but it's part of being on the island So and also shopping local. That's what we've tried to do go to like different like farm stands get some fruits from there yep. and we like supporting like the local farmers. In terms of anything we wish we did differently, I feel like the only thing that we would have really done differently is probably Island Hop. It was tough with COVID though. It and really they had was. just changed it while we were here. It was like June 15th, um, you can now Island Hop, but because of the surge of travel and everyone being here, there was like no Airbnbs available, no cars available. So you're kind of hit with that and we couldn't prepare for island hopping because it wasn't really available when we were doing it and it would have been more of a headache of getting tested here. So unfortunately, we didn't get to do island hopping. It was kind of too late by the time we found out about it because of so many people traveling here. But that is one thing I would do differently. I really wanted to go to like Oahu or even Kauai. But so. it allowed us to immerse ourselves more into Maui. And Which just, was great. just a reason to come back. Right, exactly. Overall, I hope these helped you. I mean, definitely come try to live here for a month. <laughs> I think it's so worth it. If you can find a way, I mean, work, save some money. Um, but if you have like a summer over like between even like years in college or you're graduating, like literally yeah. try to do it. It's so worth it. Once in a lifetime experience. Just make sure that you subscribe to us because we really do have some awesome videos coming up of some great things that we've done um, and we still have some more stuff yet to film so make sure you subscribe to us because you definitely want to see what we have planned next yeah see you later